Right, oh, Toyota champs. Now, Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. Which one should you get for laptops and actually desktops? I'm going to talk about both my experience with laptops. Should you go AMD or Intel? Depending on what you sort of do, because I'm going to talk about desktops as well. Which way you should go with desktops? I tell you what, I got some really good information you want to know if you're going to build a PC for content creation, etc. And I do have the MSI Z490 Tomahawk motherboard. That's an Intel system, of course, and the Gigabyte B550 Vision D AMD system. Which way should I go? Let me know down there in the comments, but we're going to talk about that in a sec. Now, I will say, go to Puget Systems Podcast, download it, subscribe to it, because they talk about what machine is better for what, and I'm going to give you the TLDR of that, but if you want something more in-depth, make sure you go subscribe to that podcast. So anyway, when it comes to laptops, AMD or Intel or Nvidia, which way should you go? I guess at the lower end, you can't beat the AMD's price to performance ratio and especially if you're going to be doing something multi-threaded and the game performance, all right, so it's not quite as good as the Intel system for a myriad of reasons. It doesn't really matter why, but I doubt you're going to notice too much difference unless you're going to be benchmarking or something like that. That all AMD G5, that looks good, doesn't it? I just wish they would have the AMD 5700, you know, the graphics card that goes into the MacBook Pro. You don't have to put 8GB of HBM memory on it, just put 8GB of GDDDR6 and imagine a 5700 AMD, that would be awesome because that thing is a beast. And what for what it was going with a 2070. And the problem with Intel versus AMD for gaming is you can only get the high-end graphics cards with Intel systems. That's just how it is at the moment. Also, you got Thunderbolt 3. I don't know if that's a big deal for gaming, especially when you're going to have a pretty good graphics card anyway. So yeah, value gaming, you can't beat AMD. And really, is there that much difference at the sort of low mid-end? And then high-end gaming, you have to go with Intel anyway. And Intel is still slightly faster for gaming for what it's worth. But when it comes to content creation for laptops, this is a more complex question. First of all, Thunderbolt, you have to get an Intel system. That's just how it is. When are we going to see a Thunderbolt on an AMD? I can't wait until we see at least USB 4.0 or Thunderbolt on, you know, an AMD system. Actually, I don't think AMD can support the latest Thunderbolt 4 protocol, the security protocol, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's exclusive to Intel, so yeah, you gotta go Intel for Thunderbolt. But when it comes to content creation, it depends on what you're doing. But again, the reality is Intel systems do have the higher end Nvidia graphics. You can even go Quadros if you want. But if you're doing something multi-threaded and you need that CPU, nothing touches AMD for performance per watt. The battery life is amazing with the AMDs and the raw CPU power. It is just undeniable AMD for the win there. So you're going to have to check what you do, whether it's more CPU or GPU bound or it's a combination of both. But there is one thing like, for example, for me, you know, old crusty old Intel HD still makes a difference, especially H.264, H.265, like video editing in Premiere. Like, yeah, stuff has gone to the GPU now. But for playback, still like H.265, you're still using that Intel HD plus the GPU with the Intel systems. Hopefully there will be optimizations done in the future that make the AMD more competitive with H.264, H.265, especially sort of playback. But if you're going to be using something like, you know, Red Raw or some sort of, you know, log footage that doesn't use any acceleration, the AMD is just going to kill it here. But again, you got the Thunderbolt, as I said before, and the higher end graphics with the Intel system. So best bang for buck AMD, CPU intensive AMD and CPU intensive means like red raw footage in Premiere or something like that. But in all other cases, the Intel system, you can get the better graphics. You got the Thunderbolt, you got the Intel HD, which still makes a difference. That crusty old thing is still going around and it gets used in quite a lot of things. So just bear that in mind. All right, so you're ready for a bit of gold now. When it comes to desktop systems, the biggest mistake you can make, especially if you're building the Intel system, is not enabling Intel HD. So make sure you do that. A lot of people don't do it. That's one pro tip for a start. Now I'm talking about what Puget System talked about in that podcast, number 23 podcast, go check it out. So Quadro, number one for reliability, driver support, certification, that's the way to go. When it comes to desktop systems like 3D rendering and stuff like that, the AMD is going to kill it with all those cores, right? Threadripper, 
and that's where the 32 and 64 cores make sense. But if we're talking like Premiere Pro, recommendations are 10900K. That's the base recommendation, of course, if you can only afford a 10600, whatever, of course, that's fine. But the next ones they recommend up are the 3950X, the 16 core AMD system, and the 10980XE, the X299 Intel CPU, that's the 18 core one. And they do recommend that the 3960X is the best sort of for Premiere Pro. Actually, 64 cores was slower, and even 32 cores, you've got to remember, you need a you know ton of RAM when you go to 32 cores. You need like a certain amount per core, you know, to get the best out of it. And then you're going to run into problems with, you know, memory thrashing, bus speeds, all these sort of things when you're dealing with that many threads. And unless the application is a multi-threaded beast, they reckon it's best to stick with that 24 core thread ripper. Here's the caveats now. If you want Thunderbolt, go Intel and 10 GBE. So that means the 10980XE and the 10900K. According to Puget System support tickets, they get like twice as many support tickets with AMD systems. Now they said it's getting better all the time, but more reliable is the Intel system. Hey, and don't shoot the messenger, right? You can go listen to the podcast and hear it with your own ears. And they do recommend if you want Thunderbolt 10 GBE, probably go to Intel, AMD, yeah. They reckon actually Thunderbolt is, it's a bit dodgy anyway, but um, if you want the best support for 10 GBE and Thunderbolt, the Intel system is the way to go. So that's very interesting to me. Now, which way should I go with this system build? Should I use this MSI Mag Z490 Tomahawk motherboard to do an Intel system for gaming and content creation? Or should I do the Ryzen system with the Gigabyte B550 Vision D? I want you to help me out here, or should I do both? And then compare them. That will be interesting, wouldn't it, for content creation? I think we know for gaming, don't we? But this Tomahawk motherboard, i got to say, I'm mighty impressed with it. And I'm impressed with its price point. And it gives you everything you sort of need for gaming. you got two M.2s. And what I particularly like about this motherboard is you get a 2.5G networking. And that makes a big difference. Usually on a motherboard at this sort of price point, you don't get the 2.5G networking. And I overclocked with this. I overclocked a 10600K and it was like a beast. It like ran fine. I could overclock to 5 gigahertz easily. Not one problem whatsoever. I did use that awesome crucial RAM, the gaming RAM with the RGB, the tight timings. But should I build that system up with that MSI motherboard or should I go this Gigabyte B550 Vision D? I gotta say, I really like the look of this motherboard. You get PCI Express 4, ECC memory support, Wolf. I love that. That'll be great for a workstation. Of course, you can put the 16 core AMD in here, so it's gonna be a content creation beast. You know, USB Type C. Actually, the MSI Tomahawk has a USB Type C, so that's good. They should all have more of that. I don't know why they got so many USB Type A's on there. But, you know, PCI Express 4, ECC memory support. And what I like particularly about this Gigabyte motherboard, it is unique. It is cool. It is wide. You can, you know, get rid of some of that grey and whatever and some black trim there. Just put it all white. It would even be better. And apparently it's got some USB type C with Titan Ridge for expanding ideas. And it's got intuitive drawing experience by DisplayPort Import 2.5 faster bandwidth than USB type 3.2 Gen 2. Wolf. USB type C with Titan Ridge. Okay. Up to 40 gigabits per second. That must be because, you know, using PCI Express 4. Let me know what you think, guys. I hope this video shed some light for you. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Tally ho.